I don't know what it is about 2019 and all my videos going to crap, but hi, this is the second video I filmed today. Everything is fine. So, in 2019, I just have, like, randomly been, like, slam dunking everybody and reading, like, ten times as much as I normally have. I feel like the last two or three years, my reading, like, amounts that I've been reading has just gone down. Like, I would normally read, like, four to five books in a month. I would read every single night. Like, I remember when I was in, like, seventh grade, eighth grade, maybe ninth grade, part of ninth grade, I would read, like, over a hundred pages a night, and, like, it would take me, like, three or four days to finish a book. I would read, like, two books a week. I I would read like six, seven, eight books a month, and I was just wildin' back then. Like, I honestly was wildin'. Now that life has just kind of been slowing down for me, I've just realized that I don't read as much as I ever have in the past. Like, I think in 2017, I read like 20 books. I think last year, I read like maybe 18 books, including like eight or nine rereads, so I only read like ten original books, which is less than a book a month. But besides that, I just haven't really had that desire to read books in the last couple of years. I don't know what it is, but I've already read like five books, and it's not even the end of the first month of the year, so y'all better look out for me in 2019, I'm coming for you. I've read five books in the year of 2019, and I also read three books at the end of last year, and I never talked about those books because I haven't made a wrap-up since then, but for all I know, my reading love is back, so y'all better look out for me. I know that y'all probably think that, like, I was out for a while and, like, I wasn't really on my game, but, like, Look out, y'all. I'm coming for you. And I know that five books isn't a lot, so you can drag me, but I'm actually really, really happy with where my reading is at right now. I haven't read any young adult books in 2019, and that's not me being, like, a young adult shamer, because, like, I mean, like, like, look at that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm having so much fun, like, going out of my genre of choice, reading things that I've never heard anybody recommend. But, like, I'm really happy to say that I have not given any books less than four stars. Like, I have all five and four. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm gonna start with three books that I read at the end of last year that I just never talked about, and I don't want those books to just be forgotten, so I'm just gonna mention them here. I reread the Harry Potters, the first three of them. Do I need to do a review, or should I just say they're good? I'm on a journey to reread this whole series by the end of this year. I'm currently in the middle of the fourth book, but that one's the biggest one, so then I always get like halfway through, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna read something else. Yikes to that, but I will probably finish that eventually. What I was doing is I would read the book, and then I'd watch the movie, and then I would read the next book, and then I'd watch that movie, and it was like a really, really fun thing. Like, every single day I'd be like, it's time to read. I'd say I had the most fun rereading the first one, just because I feel like this is the lightest one. There's a lot of like really, really fun moments in this one, and I love everybody in this book so much, and it's okay. So yeah, I gave this the five stars, but I feel like y'all knew that. I just gotta say, even though the third one has always been like, in my head, my favorite. I had not that fun reading this book. <laughs> Surprisingly not that much fun. I think part of the reason why this was my favorite for so many years was because this was the one that surprised me the most. I feel like there were so many twists at the end, like, you, you've you all read this book, so you obviously know what I'm talking about, but like, with Sirius and his identity and how the Marauders play into the story, like, that surprised me so much. And like, I'm a huge fan of time travel, like, so, I love time travel so much, just letting y'all know that. Maybe it's in one of my books that I've written, or maybe Maybe not. Y'all have to decide that. It is. It, it is. I don't know why I said that. I feel like the first time I read it, I had an actual, like, sense of danger, you know, because Sirius Black is a murderer. <laughs> and so when you actually believe him to be a murderer and, like, he's breaking into the castle and all this stuff is happening, you're actually like, Break! We all about to die! When you know that everything turns out fine and you know his identity, all the twists are just like, oh yeah, I knew that the whole time, so. I don't know what's going on with this book, but this is the book where I have the most tea about, where it's like obviously a five stars and I love the series and this world and all of that, but I just feel like this book was probably not my favorite. I don't know, it's tea, but y'all knew that. We're gonna move on to some actual books that I've read this year. The first book that I read in actual 2019, cause those other three were in 2018. Sorry about that, but. The first book that I picked up in 2019 was not a book that I had planned on reading, mostly because I didn't even really know that this this book existed. I feel like I knew it existed, but I feel like I've never actually like had any desire to read it. And then randomly, I saw somebody talking about it in their favorite books of the year video, and I feel really bad because I actually don't remember who it was, but I was just going on autoplay as I do, and some random person randomly started talking about this book, and I was like, that's gonna be me. I'm about to read that book. I did read it, and I did actually enjoy it. It is a film. It's a relatively popular author, and it is like a huge... 
whatever the frick, I don't know where I was going with that sentence, but Misery by Stephen King. Over the years of being on booktube, I've always been dragged for not reading Stephen King. Like, I've actually been dragged. And I remember I had posted my favorite books of 2018 video, and there were people like, oh, why doesn't he read Stephen King? Like, I just, I don't know what it is, but something about, like, Stephen King fans are very similar to, like, the blood purists in the Harry Potter world. Like, I don't know. Sorry. I just never really wanted to read any of his books, but it's fine. And did I just compare Stephen King's fan to blood purists? I don't know, but apparently that's something that just came out of my mouth, but... Like, I've always been dragged for not reading any of his books, um, but I have now, so y'all better look out. Now I'm gonna drag everybody for not reading his books. This book follows an author who's, like, a huge author of this really, really big series called, like, the Misery series which is the title of the book. He gets in this car accident and this woman comes to rescue him and that woman is his number one fan and so she basically kidnaps him. This book is like more of a thriller story, scary story type thing. This wasn't like my favorite book of all time so I gave it a four stars as opposed to a five stars. Part of what makes this story so scary is that like the main character is basically like paralyzed throughout the whole book and he's like stuck in his bed and he has to rely on this crazy person to you know help him with his needs in order to escape. I do plan to read more of his stuff um but his books are freaking long so I don't know about that. I know that I might get dragged for this because Stephen King fans are blood purists in my head but I had a lot of problems with the actual writing of this book like I don't know what it was but like a lot of it was just like run on thoughts that was the main character was having and like random like flashbacks that had nothing to do with anything. Weird metaphors like I don't know maybe that's just Stephen King style maybe I'm just not used to that type of writing but like I've never read anything like it and I don't mean that in a good way. It it was like a four star book. It was really enjoyable. I do recommend if like this is something that you'd be down to read and enjoy, but yeah, that's it. The next book is a book that I got from the library and I did return it, so I don't have it here to show you. I know some of y'all are going to be very disappointed, but I mean, I can put like a picture of it if that's what you want to see. And this was the first five star book of the year and that was Animal Farm by George Orwell. Who am I? Y'all thought that it was gonna be something like Kingdom of Ash or something but no way. It's a classic, it's really really short and I heard it was interesting um, and so I was like why not I get it from the library? I bet it will be good. And it was really good. I gave it a five stars. This book is about this farm and there are animals on the farm. I know that might be a shock to some of y'all, but... Animal Farm is just about this farm, and these animals are just living their best life, and then they're like, wait a minute, how come we out here all day getting all this milk and making these eggs for this farmer, and we ain't even getting nothing? So then they decide to overthrow the farm, and then, like, they drive the farmer out, and now they got their own Animal Farm! And they name it Animal Farm, because that's the title of the book. Basically from there everything goes to garbage because then it turns into like this weird communist thing and then they're like overthrowing each other and then they're like abusing each other and murdering each other. It gets pretty rough. I was a really big fan of the Horace character. Um, I'm pretty sure he died but it's kind of upset when the animals started to kill each other. But I had so much fun reading this book. I read it in like one day. Uh, the version that I had was like a weird special edition, so it had these cool pictures in it. I feel like from the outside, you can see it as this really silly story about these animals overthrowing the farmers and trying to make rules for the farm and working together and slowly things start to get really bad. There's a lot of layers to the story and it gets like surprisingly real at some points. It makes you think a lot about like modern day politics and stuff like that. It's a really, really interesting story. I would definitely call it one of my favorite favorite classics. I'm trying to get my hands on like an actual version of it, but I just haven't really wanted to spend any money. I think that's why I value this book so much, just because it made me think so much about whatever the frick. I was trying to be deep there, but I can't do it. The next book is another book that I got from the library because lol, I don't buy books anymore because that's how I'm living my best life, but. I was just wandering through the library and then I randomly saw her sitting there and I was like, you know what? I think Yes, Please, and that is exactly what the book is called. Wow, what a great segue. Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. I had never really intended to pick this book up. Like, I remember a couple years ago, I saw a lot of people hauling this book, and then that thing happened where everyone hauled it, but nobody read it, so I didn't really know how people felt about it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Amy Poehler. Like, I've seen some of her films. I love Parks and Rec. I've seen her on SNL. She's just been somebody that, like, you know, I, I respect her comedy a lot. So I thought, like, it'd be fun to read her book and see what's 
going on? I ended up giving like a four stars. Like it feels really weird to be like, your life story is only worth four stars. So like it's weird to find like a rating. I'm more rating it not on the actual content of the memoir, but more how I actually enjoyed myself while reading the memoir. And there were some sections of it that I didn't really necessarily care about that kind of took away from some of my enjoyment and led me to giving it only a four stars. But it's just freaking weird to like, you know, review somebody's memoir because it's like Whoa. Your life story sucks. <laughs> we got two more books to talk about, y'all. I know that a lot of you are going to be very excited that I read this book because I feel like everybody, especially last year, have been raving about this book for like a really, really long time. And I remember I did that thing like whenever I saw like a book being really, really hyped and I avoided it with everything inside of me. Randomly found myself watching some documentaries about like movie stars from like the 40s through the 60s. I watched this hour and a half documentary about like Judy Garland and her whole life story. And then I also fell into this weird like Marilyn Monroe thing. I do this all the time where I'll fall into like YouTube holes about like different history things or different like biography things. I found myself falling into this like classic Hollywood, like darker sides of Hollywood things. And I was like, you know what? I've heard that there's a book about like Hollywood and a superstar who gets married seven times. And I was like, I hate giving into the hype. So I'll just get it from the library. I read like 150 pages of it, decided that I loved it so much that I was willing to buy a hard copy of it. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave this book a five stars, but like I'm not even joking when I say that this is one of my favorite books of like all time. I think looking back the last like two, three years, like this is the most notable read in my head. I don't know if it's the writing or just like the actual way that it's set up. Like there was not a single moment in this this book where I thought it was dragging on too much. There wasn't really anything that I can actually point to and be like, this could have been done better. Like, in my head, this is just like a masterpiece. I wish that somehow there could be a sequel to this, but like, I don't think there could. No spoilers, but I don't think there could. After reading this, I, like, I don't know what it is, but like, part of me is like so angry at myself for not picking this up sooner. I've never actually heard anybody actually like pitch the synopsis of this book, so I'm gonna try right now, and I'm sorry for that. But the main character of this book is this journalist girl named Moni works for this magazine or whatever and then there's this superstar Evelyn Hugo who was around like a big actress in like the 60s and 70s and 80s and whatever and, like this huge well-known actress like very very iconic you know I almost picture her like a Marilyn Monroe type figure even though Marilyn Monroe like passed away like in the 60s or whatever, but you know what I'm talking about. That's the type of person we're talking about here. So this girl Monique is gonna do like this short little piece because, you know, she's hosting an auction for some of her dresses. So Evelyn specifically requests for this girl Monique to do this piece on her. And she's like, what the frick? Okay, like this is gonna be like a big deal for me in my career or whatever. She meets up with Evelyn and then Evelyn's like, we ain't doing this piece. I want you to write my whole story, like my entire biography. And then the rest of the book is just the two of them sitting down and Evelyn detailing her life. The book is called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because something that was very, very well known about this actress is that over her career she had seven husbands. And it is so enjoyable. Like, it genuinely, like, moved me a lot. It made me think a lot. I attached with the characters so much. Like, I genuinely felt so many feelings while reading this book. I don't even remember remember the last time a book like invoked so much like power in me and so much thoughts and like I can't remember it because it's been so long. I'd say my only issue, there's a love interest in this book that goes on throughout the entire book. It is called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and we do move from each relationship but there is kind of this love story woven throughout the entire course of the book um, and I don't want to give anything away because I would say this is like the biggest spoiler of the book that left me like gasping when it was revealed. So I'm not going to give away who it is or their name or anything, but I hated that person. <laughs> I absolutely hated them. This isn't me talking about the quality of this book at all, but that specific love interest is like the worst type of person to be in a relationship with. They're the type of person where like one thing goes mildly wrong and then they're like, I'm done, we're broken up. Like, 
I hated them. And I think because I hated that person so much, like whenever they would get back together, I would just be mad. Like I'd be like, ooh. Part of the enjoyment of this book was like that very few books make me feel that way, where I'm genuinely like rooting for certain characters or rooting against certain characters. And I feel like even though I didn't love that person, I still had a really, really fun time reading about it. And I still had a lot of fun being in this world and with these characters. So I love this book a lot. I give it a five stars. I definitely recommend, and if you've been iffy about it, just do it. It's a, it's a masterpiece. So we have one more book, which this isn't even a real book. This is more of a novella that I had read. Novella? It's a novella. Is it a novella? No, it's a novella. I got dragged when I said novella. It's like a novella short story type thing that I randomly picked up. I never even planned on reading this, but after I had read this mess, the piece, I was like, you know what? I started doing that thing where I started stalking the author on Goodreads and looking for every book that they've ever written. I started reading like the synopsises just to see like which one sounded the best to me and I would like add them to my list of what I wanted to read or whatever. And then I found this one and I clicked it and it sounded so interesting. It reminded me the most of Evelyn Hugo. So I was like, ooh, this sounds like something I'm gonna enjoy. Then I saw that it was a short story. So I was like, ooh, maybe not. And then I saw that it was free on Amazon, so I was like, you know what? Who cares? I'm <laughs> I'm freaking gonna read this book. It was a really snowy day, and I just kind of curled up with my phone, and I just read the whole thing. It was only like 100 pages. That is Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Maybe she's my new favorite author. I don't know. Maybe I'll pull a misery and try to kidnap her or something. Finally living up to his username. But this book is a book that I had never heard anything about because it's not a book, it's a novella. Is it a novella or a short story? I'm gonna keep calling it a novella. If it's not, you can just drag me in the comment section down below. Uh, this is gonna be hard to describe, but. So there are two different married couples and then the, the man from this relationship and the woman from this relationship, they start cheating on each other, and then they start to send letters to each other talking about how each of their spouses are, are cheating on them. They start to bond over the fact that their spouses are cheating on them. Does that make any freaking sense? I don't know. It was really enjoyable. I flew through it relatively quick. Like, I will say that this was enjoyable for what it is, you know? I'm not trying to rate this as a full novel because that's not what this is. Is. It was like a four stars because for what it was, it was enjoyable. I also thought that I would tell you some of the books that I'm like currently reading-ish. I'm in the middle of two different books. The first one is the one that I kind of talked about earlier, and that is The Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. It's a Harry Potter book, but y'all knew that. I am currently about... 349 pages in this book. It's like really good, but it's really long. And I'm also in the middle of reading where did she go? Hunger by Roxanne Gay. I'm like halfway through it. I'm on page 153. I've seen a couple people recommend this book, um, and I'm having a, a good time reading it. I don't think it's gonna be like my favorite book of all time, because again, it is freaking weird to rate somebody's memoir. And also, I just want to say is I've seen like several people talk about this book, and I even started to read this book, and read like a lot of it, and then last night, I closed the book, and I realized that this was a fork. But I feel like after all these times of seeing it, I thought it was just a gray swoop. Nope, it's the fork. And I just realized my problem with reading this book is I will like see the book and I'll start reading it and then Hunger by Florence and the Machine gets stuck in my head. And then I can't focus on the book and then I start playing the song. Is that not relatable content or what? But yes, these are some of the books that I am currently reading and or have read in the last couple of months. When was my last wrap up? Was it in like October? That's embarrassing. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post videos on Tuesday. Sorry that the lighting sucks throughout this whole video. I've been trying to figure it out. Also, my hair just doesn't want to cooperate and also I'm sweating so much so the video is kind of a mess. Make sure to subscribe.